Hello, you're watching a change log video as I discuss some of the big major new features and uh, additions that have been made to SEO Content Machine Next over the month of April uh, 2020. So the first one that I'll get straight into is if you go into settings, uh, we've always had it but proxies have now fully been implemented and part of that meant having to rebuild SEO Content Machine Next and actually I had to port it from one framework to another and together with putting it to a new framework it also meant uh, actually adding a completely new auto updating framework and to add to that it also means that the setup deliverables that you use to download SEO Content Machine has changed slightly so for Windows users SEO Content Machine next your installer now supports 64 and 32 bit in one installer package and the installer has become a bit bigger because of that. If you are on Linux, you now install and run the application using a .app image. If you are a Mac user, you now download a DMG file, which you can just double click to open and install. I just want to add very quickly that for Mac users, the SEO Content Machine Next application has been developer ID'd and also been notarized which means you can install the app and you can auto-update it without any security prompts from Mac. So going over the changes that have occurred over April, so outside from proxies, uh, the app settings page has gotten a slight revamp. And the reason why for that is because your post uploader now has a wait time. So instead of posting as quickly as it can to your blog, instead it's going to wait a number of seconds between each request so by default set to zero but as you can see you can move that number uh, to 10 or anything that you feel is appropriate and also the Google scraper before it was uh, multi-threaded and this hit the setting was actually hidden so it was set to 10 by default so if you are using a spinner that doesn't support multiple requests per second you're going to run into errors if you run the Google scraper so what happens now is if you're going to use the spinners that doesn't support multiple requests per second, you're going to have to set the Google Scraper work account back to one. Moving over to the article creator now, so here's a very big change and it's to do with the article settings area. So previously all you really had was one box to put in your article count and then you had a couple of other boxes for your paragraphs. So this has been completely redone. You also notice that the right spin text and no spin text selection has been moved right next to the article type here. So you know uh, exactly whether your article is going to come out with spin text or not. So now here we have a slider that says Google results. So as you can see, Google results, 25 URLs by default. You can drag it down to zero if you don't want to scrape Google. You can drag it all the way up to 300 URLs if you want to go right down uh, into three pages worth of search results. So I'm going to set that back down to 20. Next we have our paragraph count and you can set that down from 1 to 1 all the way up to 99 to 99 paragraphs. So as you move the slider along you'll see that the estimated word count for your body tag is going to be from this selection. Next to that we have our paragraph variations which used to live down below here in the task settings that's been moved up as well. So by default set to one variation and of course you can drag all that slider right up to get up to 10 variations per paragraph. And as you see me play with these sliders, you notice that this bar here has started changing. So what does that bar mean? So the bar is indicating for you, for one article, exactly how much content is it likely to use. So if we're going to only scrape one URL worth of, worth of content from Google, and we set our article count to one, it says our single article size is 20% of available. So what is this saying is that if I drag this up to 5 and 5, so based on a good guesstimation, if we scrape Google for one article worth of results, we're going to get about 5 paragraphs of usable content. That means that if we run with these settings, we're going to get a single article size of 100%, which means our estimated unique article count is going to be 1 because we're using all the available content we have. Obviously, if we want to drag the paragraphs to two variations, we're basically doubling the content requirement. We're not going to have enough content to write our article. So that means that we should 
add more Google results. So if we add 10 URLs, it's going to give us a lot more leeway and it's saying that for each article we create, we're only going to use about one-fifth of the available content. In other words, we're going to get about five articles worth of content in total. So as you can see, by playing around these sliders, we get a good estimate. Um, your actual article count is going to be higher or lower based on what the real content results are in Google. For those of you who want to go back to the old settings, which is if you dead set on having to need to create exactly 100 articles, you can uh, actually click on this drop down here and select required article count. So what this is going to mean is that instead of only creating as many unique articles as it can, it's going to go through your list of paragraphs. When it reaches the end, it's going to shuffle that list, go back to the beginning and uh, go through that uh, content bucket again. So I'm going to leave the settings as they are. I'm going to go back out and I'm actually going to run this article creator. And the reason why is that there have been a lot of changes to the uh, log output. You can see it says using proxies direct, meaning I'm not using any proxies. Uh, if you did enter some proxies in, you're going to see them listed here. Checking country is set to ZZ, which means that uh, we're sending to the current region. And you've probably noticed now, there's a big image here right in the middle. SEO Content Machine Next is going to do from now on. It's going to take a screenshot of the actual Google results as it was found. And the reason why this is useful is that by looking at this image, you can tell instantly whether you've put the right keywords in. You can also tell whether the results are coming back in the right language and region. So this is just a very good, quick visual overview. At the same time, if you are running Google search and there's an error, uh, this image is going to show you the last state that Google was in when uh, it was unable to proceed. So that might mean captures that were not sol solvable, or maybe you used proxies which died. A uh, new thing that we've added to the log is we can see exactly where our article counts are coming from. So here, template max file 1, 5, and we can also see here that we're writing each article in turn, and where exactly our content resets are happening. This a change has been for the post uploader. You can now set the posting interval from zero to zero days. So what that means is if you set a date in the past and I've set the posting interval to zero days, as you can see, everything's going to be live on that one day. Obviously the hours are going to be different. So this is how you can preload all your content into a blog uh, without having to wait for them to schedule as previously, I think the minimum was had to be at least a day. So that's been changed. As you can see, that would mean you have to wait nine days to see all your blog posts come live. Switching track over to the settings page, we've always had the backup files tool, but this is new. Now, if you back up your files, you can import your backup with one click. Uh, there's no need to go extracting your files and finding where they live anymore. Uh, this is all done for you uh, in one click. So that's a uh, new in. And very useful. For those of you that read the change log, this is a, a change that's going to make uh, reading and decoding the log a lot easier. So previously we had just dumped everything on one page. Uh, instead now all of the changes have been grouped into the week that they belong to. So for here, all the changes that start from April the 17th have been grouped into this week. And then if you need to go further back, everything up to the April the 10th has been placed as these changes and so on and so forth. For those of you that use the preview article tool, there's been a couple of new features added for you as well. So let's go create article. I'm going to click on the preview button. We can actively delete files we don't need from this preview tool by clicking this button here. If you click on preview, you can export and at the same time you can also delete. So that's been added for you now. If you are using the Google Scraper and you're actually scraping multiple keywords, just to give you an example, uh, when you run it in the header, it's actually going to display what keyword it's working on and how many keywords it's actually got in the list to go through. So here's a very quick way of keeping track of how far your task is going towards completion. Okay, so that covers most of the new features that have been added. If you want to get in contact with me, either to make a bug report or to request a feature, send me an email, info at seocontentmachine.com. Thank you.